these abductors are down and adherent to the hip capsule. And as you can see, we're beginning to expose the hip capsule. And so I'm taking a scissors back superiorly and developing a pouch between abductor muscle and femoral head. This potential space has to be cleared so that this capsule can be pulled distally and the abductor muscles which were scarred to it abnormally can be separated. So this great big bulbous excessively lax capsule and if we don't know how to deal with this, you can see how every time the child takes a step, this moves proximally. And that's part of the laxity that we have. And we're going to open that in a minute. But if this isn't really cleared very, very well, then we may have a risk for it redislocating. And our strong opinion that the reason that people have problems with loss of reduction after surgery is that they don't understand the details of the... the... We're going to make a transverse cut along the labrum, and then a longitudinal cut in alignment with the femoral neck. And this will develop our flaps, which we'll later be describing. And the flap that we're going to excise is going to be this superolateral triangle. In this particular schemata, the superolateral triangle will be excised and actually discarded, and then it will allow an internal rotation type of capsulography without overlap. We, we say, state that it should be similar to a hernia repair. A large segment of capsule is actually taken out and discarded. There are many ways to do it, but the method we use is that of Salter. With the hip held in abduction and internal rotation, the capsulorophy sutures are sequentially tied. I can now take this hip, adduct it, and I can try to push that out, but there is no place for it to go because I extinguished the sac that's in the back.